The United States introduced in a South Korea, the Korean peninsula, the world's biggest hotspot, the huge nuclear strategic asset, seriously threatening the peace and security of the peninsula and pushing the situation there to bring of war. It has been created a dangerous situation in which the summer nuclear war may break out at any moment. That's North Korean Deputy Ambassador warning the United States that a thermal nuclear war could happen at any moment. This, of course, on the heels of the Trump administration threatening the use of military force against North Korea, affirming all foreign allies and foes that all options are still on the table. But exactly what are those military options? Here to help break it down, Peter Brooks and Jesse Jane Duff. Before we start, guys, in the last segment, uh, Fort O'Connell mentioned a, a speculation that the Nimitz and Reagan were heading to Korea. That is not true. We've confirmed at Fox Business that's not true. Of course, the Carl Vincent should be there uh, on April 24th. Jesse Jang, let's talk about the potential scenarios. If, if all of this negotiation fails and Korea, North Korea continues their belligerent actions, including missile tests and perhaps even a nuclear missile uh, test, give me the scale, the range of, of military options and outcomes. Well, first of all, they've made it very clear to us that they will hit us with a preemptive nuclear strike if they are even aware or hinting, or the U.S. is even hinting at hitting them. So they've made that very clear. They also have on the table, they have trying to design a missile that can travel over 2,000 miles. That means it can hit Guam, where we have over 150,000 U.S. citizens. They also have on their table a intercontinental ballistic missile that can possibly travel over 7,000 miles. Let us not keep mocking them because they cannot get these off the ground. That is also because of probably U.S. cyber attack that is stopping them. When are they going to get the coding right? When will they get these computers aggressively set where we can no longer derail them? We are in a critical situation. We have over 35,000 Army, Navy, Air Force and Marines in South Korea standing by right now. This is serious. Peter, uh, one, the part of the sense of urgency, of course, is that we know that ultimately they'll get all of this right if, not, if there's not some form of intervention. That's why there's such intensity. That's why it feels like something is imminent. If it does include some sort of military action, what would it look like on our side? And what's a worst case scenario? Well, I would caution restraint, Charles. I mean, you're, this is a major, major regional contingency. This is a major theater war. South Korea will, would be involved. Obviously, China might come in on the side of North Korea. Japan could be involved. You have some of the world's largest economies up there, some of the world's most powerfully political countries. Russia also borders North Korea. You have to think long and hard about this because a military war in that part of the world could go well beyond the Korean Peninsula. So, you know, if this something is going to happen, all U.S. forces are going to have to be directed uh, towards the Korean Peninsula. We're talking about a majority of our aircraft carriers, a majority of our forces. And right now, we have to think about it, they are obligated elsewhere in a fight with ISIS, in a fight in, with the Taliban in Afghanistan. So this also makes us step back and look at our defense budget and our capabilities. We certainly could win a war on the Korean Peninsula with our South Korean allies, but it's going to be very, very ugly, and it's going to require a lot of of intense U.S. military intervention. Yeah, Jesse, Jane, of course, uh, we, we have to remember the, the reason we have a demilitarized zone is that we fought to a standstill there. And we know that uh, Kim Jong-un has at his, his, his disposal, if you want to call it that, uh, hundreds of thousands of troops. So I don't think a loss of life is something that would necessarily phase him, but a loss of face might. Uh, do we need or should we get permission from China before we launch any sort of preemptive attacks, even if it's to knock down those next, the next missile test? I don't know if permission is the correct word, but we are trying to enforce and work uh, very favorably with the Chinese so that they have our back to go forward. I understand that this is a very tense situation with China also, but Pres uh, Vice President Pence just said the era of strategic patience is over. It has essentially failed in the last eight years and the administrations prior to that. Keep in mind, he is in 
South Korea, where his father was awarded a Bronze Star 64 years ago in the Korean War. His son is a United States Marine on active duty. Nobody understands this probably better than him because it has hit home quite personally. Secretary Mattis stated very clearly, if we are hit with any conventional or nuclear weapons, it will be a very strong response from the United States. So Kim is really in a situation where I think he's feeling like he's losing face because he can't attack us, right. but he wants to attack us. All right, guys, thank you both very, very much. Really appreciate it.